everybody. Today I'm taking you through the new book, Biohack Your Brain, How to Boost Cognitive Health, Performance and Power by Dr. Christian Willemeyer. Dr. Christian has a very extensive background in neuroscience and neurobiology, and she's also been the research director of the Amen Clinics in the United States. So I was pretty excited to read this book just given all of her experience. The cool thing about the book for those of you who are new to brain health is that it's written at a very general level, a very readable level. I think it's probably meant to target the average person who just wants to make sure they're covering all their bases when it comes to brain health. But she's bringing such a wealth of experience to the book that you know you can rely on the information in it. In her book, she gives you tons of very practical advice. And for the purpose of this video, I'm not gonna go into her exercise and lifestyle recommendations. Today, we're just going to very quickly run through her basic nutrition recommendations and the supplements that she recommends. Now, before we get into it, I just wanted to say thank you to everybody who has subscribed to my channel, especially those of you who subscribe based on some of the book reviews that I've done in the past. I think it's been over a year since I have done a book review, so I really appreciate you sticking around and watching my videos. You'll be happy to know that I've got some really good ones planned for the near future. So thank you so much for being here and I hope you enjoy this review as well as the ones that are coming. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet and you like this video, I would love for you to hit the subscribe button and join us here regularly. Now the first nutrition recommendation she makes is to eat more omega-3s. She says that omega-3s are so important for brain health and the most important type is DHA, which is mainly found in oily fish and seafood. She does talk about plant-based sources of omega-3s, things like walnuts and flax seeds, but she says that given that your body has a harder time converting those, and this is something that's quite well known in the nutrition world, that you probably shouldn't rely on them as your sole source of omega-3s. So her recommendation is that most people should be eating about two servings of oily fish or seafood each week to make sure that they're getting enough omega-3s. One of the other interesting things she talks about when it comes to fat in this book is her thoughts on saturated fat. Now, these days, paleo and high fat diets are all the rage, but she says that nearly every long-term study has shown that high saturated fat diets are disastrous for brain health. They cause more inflammation, they can cause mood problems, and they've even been linked to Alzheimer's in the long run. So she's definitely not a fan of high fat diets. She says you do need a little bit of saturated fat in your diet, and the source that she recommends is coconut oil. Now the second recommendation she makes is to eat carbs. I think this is a really cool recommendation because these days carbs have a bad reputation on social media. There's a lot of people touting low carb diets, high fat diets, but in this book she talks about how your brain needs carbs to function optimally. And in my experience, especially as women, that is what I've seen. I think that we need some carbs to feel good. And she says that's because your brain relies on a continuous supply of glucose to function properly. And she says the studies have shown that whole grains are linked to lower rates of cognitive decline over time. So she's recommending that that source of glucose and energy for your brain come mainly from whole grains. And of course, that you avoid processed carbs, things that are gonna cause insulin spikes. The third recommendation she makes is to eat mostly plants. And in particular, she talks about the benefits of dark leafy greens for your brain. She says that these dark green vegetables provide a lot of nutrients that are critical for brain health. And in terms of the dark leafy greens that she's referring to, she's talking about things like kale and spinach and some lettuce. She lumps other veggies like cauliflower and broccoli and mushrooms 
into a secondary category of vegetables, which she says are also important for your brain. But she says it's just really important that you're getting these dark leafy greens in your diet. And then she also mentions the importance of color and having the orange and the red vegetables. So things like butternut squash would be great and just anything with color really. And then she also talks about having a couple serves of fruit every day. And in particular, blueberries get a special mention, which isn't really a big surprise because blueberries come up in most books that talk about brain health. They're known to be a powerhouse for the brain. In terms of protein, she says, get most of your protein from plants. So things like legumes and tofu and tempeh, and then minimize animal proteins like meat, dairy, and eggs. She says the research over the last couple of decades is pretty clear that plant protein protects your brain, it lowers inflammation, it's better for mood and just your overall health and longevity. So in the book, of course, she goes into more detail when it comes to nutrition, but those are her main recommendations. Eat more omega-3s, eat some carbs, eat mostly plants and minimize your animal proteins. So when it comes to supplements, she divides them up into three categories. She has a starting lineup, an all-star lineup, and then she has a category of supplements which she recommends for people who've had brain injury or who have a serious cognitive disorder. Today, I'm just gonna talk about her starting lineup. The all-star lineup in the book is meant to be for people who don't mind taking extra supplements, who maybe have a budget for extra supplements, who are sort of next level. But today, we'll just talk about her basic ones. So her first supplement that she recommends are omega-3s. So we're talking fish oil. Now, it's not clear if she's recommending fish oil over and above the oily fish a couple times a week. So if you are somebody who meets her recommendations for oily fish, it's not clear how much fish oil you need, but she says that most people fall very short of omega-3s in their diet, particularly because omega-6s in the average diet are so high. And this is something that's well known in the nutrition world. We need a better balance of omega-3s and that's why she's recommending an omega-3 supplement. The second thing she recommends is a multivitamin. She says, again, the average diet just falls short of everything we need for brain health and having a multivitamin to fill in those nutritional gaps is really important. She says the aiming clinic Studies have confirmed the importance of taking multivitamins for brain health. So they've looked at thousands of scans and they've seen the benefits of taking multivitamins. But she says there's also research that shows that taking a multivitamin is linked to a slower rate of cognitive decline over time. Now she also recommends a trace mineral supplement over and above the multivitamin. And I'm not sure why she does this because I think most multivitamins cover the trace minerals fairly well. If you invest in a good multivitamin, most of them will have things like the selenium and the zinc and the chromium. So I'm not sure why you would need a trace mineral supplement over and above, but that is one of her recommendations in the book. And then finally, she also mentions vitamin D. She says vitamin D is very important for brain health and for mood. And it's also been linked to lower levels of amyloid plaque, which has been related to Alzheimer's disease. So she makes a recommendation for taking vitamin D over and above the multivitamin. And that would probably be my recommendation as well. That's what I do personally. I find most multivitamins fall short of getting your vitamin D where it needs to be, especially in the winter months. And then finally, she mentions curcumin, which is really cool because I've talked about curcumin on this channel before. I'm a big fan of it for brain health. I've talked about how it's very helpful for anxiety and depression and lowering inflammation. I think it's just one of those great supplements that has so many benefits. And she confirms that in the book, she talks about all of those things, about its benefit for lowering inflammation, about how it protects your neurons, about how it's protective against dementia and Alzheimer's. So 
it's just really great to see it come up. I think that for somebody who's looking to improve their overall health, not only their brain health, curcumin is a great supplement. And in fact, I'm thinking about doing a more in-depth video on curcumin here on this channel. So if you have any questions about it, leave them in the comments below. That will give me an idea of what you want to hear more about in future videos. So that's it. That's my review of the book Biohack Your Brain. As I said at the beginning of this video, she's a very educated person. She's got so much experience, but she condenses it down into a very readable book that I think is great for the average person just wanting to improve their brain health or just make sure that they're covering off everything they need to do to help prevent cognitive decline as they get older. Definitely check it out if that sounds like you. If you're somebody who wants to go a little bit more sciencey or who wants recipes and that kind of stuff, I mean, I love recipes and books. I was a little bit disappointed not to see them in this one. Then maybe this book isn't for you. So that's it from me today. Remember to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. So you catch my future book reviews and other good stuff we're going to talk about. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again next time.